Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today we have a really interesting theme that emerges from the news, which is the geopolitics of AI and the global competition both around new models but also around regulatory regimes. Now, of course, maybe the biggest story in AI today is the launch of Meta's Code Llama, but for that you can check out the main episode, which is coming shortly after this one. For us, where we begin is in the country of Spain. Spain has just launched the Spanish Agency for the Supervision of Artificial Intelligence, the AESIA, and is touting it as the first European country to establish a dedicated AI agency. The new agency was created by royal decree and approved by the Council of Ministers on August 22nd. The agency is to be a joint effort of the Spanish Ministry of Finance and Civil Service, as well as the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Digital Transformation. Now, this is actually part of a larger effort in Spain called the National Artificial Intelligence Strategy. And it's quite clear from that that Spain's approach to regulation in this area is not to strangle this industry, but to harness it. As part of the announcement, the Spanish government writes, Digital transformation is a priority in the government's line of action, as reflected by the Digital Agenda 2026. This strategy includes various strategic plans, among them the National Strategy for Artificial Intelligence, which aims to provide a framework for the development of artificial intelligence that is inclusive, sustainable, and citizen-centered. Meanwhile, moving over to the UK, another country that is making major efforts to be a global leader in both the development of artificial intelligence technology as well as its regulation, one of their cornerstone initiatives for this year is the AI Safety Summit that's coming later this fall on November 1st and 2nd. The UK's Department for Science, Innovation and Technology has just revealed more details of the summit. One of the notable aspects of that is where it's to be held. The summit is to be held at Bletchley Park, which is probably best known as the home for Britain's code-breaking efforts during World War II. The estate housed the Government Code and Cipher School, whose most famous accomplishment was breaking the German Enigma Code. In addition to the location for the summit, the Prime Minister's office has also announced their representatives, Matt Clifford and Jonathan Black, who together will, quote, spearhead talks and negotiations as they rally leading AI nations and experts over the next three months to ensure the summit provides a platform for countries to work together on further developing a shared approach to agree the safety measures needed to mitigate the risks of AI. The press release also referenced other UK AI efforts, including the announcement last week of £13 million for AI research focused on healthcare. Now, one of the more interesting things about the UK's efforts was the appointment in June of entrepreneur Ian Hogarth to chair the UK's AI Foundation Model Task Force. To me, this signaled a real seriousness about both the safety aspects of this conversation as well as the innovation and entrepreneurial aspects, and so I'm excited to see what the Department for Science, Innovation, and Technology does. Now, outside of just national regulatory and policy efforts, big tech companies from around the world are also launching more customized local solutions. South Korean internet giant Naver has unveiled its own generative AI model, which it calls Hyperclova X, continuing the grand tradition of really, really bad LLM names. Although it does sound like maybe the shorthand for the name of the AI service will be Q. Now, what's most interesting about this announcement to me is the way that the company is positioning their service. They're saying basically that they have a leg up in understanding South Korea's culture, background, regulation, and laws. CEO Choi Soo Yeon said, I am proud that Naver is the company which knows Koreans' minds the best. The company also claims that Q had better results compared to ChatGPT 3.5 in internal testing. And I think it'll be interesting to see the extent to which this local customization or fine-tuning actually matters. It wouldn't shock me at all if it actually does. And if the strategy gets borne out, it could impact how LLM competition rolls out around the world. Lastly today, Alibaba has released two new models. The models are called Quen VL and Quen VL Chat, and say that the models allow for the quote, input and comparison of multiple images, as well as the ability to specify questions related to the images and engage in multi-image storytelling. Now, the market interpretation of Alibaba's fierce push into the AI space is an attempt to increase growth for their cloud division as that part of the company prepares to go public. The company is releasing both models open source, although of course, standard caveats apply. Whenever a big tech company says that they're releasing a model open source, it's worth reading the fine print. Lastly, one note today as a follow-up from previous episodes, despite the monster, monster NVIDIA earnings report, which one Wall Street analyst called a 1995 internet moment, the stock market continues to wobble in advance of Fed Chair Jerome Powell's speech at Jackson Hole. This has been one of the key themes all year. Negative macro factors on the one hand, positive AI factors on the other. And frankly, I think it's a little bit comforting that the exuberance and enthusiasm around AI isn't so powerful that it can overcome what I think are legitimate fears of the Fed chair saying that interest rates are going to be held higher for longer. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. 
Thanks as always for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI breakdown.